I've got a lot of my of people on my channel, okay, who's very much so interested in Islam, okay, but they may not specifically know the difference between Sunnis and Shias. Could you give us the, the you know the biggest distinction between Sunni and Shia? Where where is the you know the parting of ways between Sunni Islam and Shia Islam? Modern day Twelveism, Twelveism is so has so much deviated from Islam in all its forms, from the way they worship. From the from their aid, from the way they invoke, it's so much deviated that there is definitely argument. Uh, there is room to argue that this is not even Islam. Uh, first question I need to ask is: How can you, as a, as a Sunni, uh, reconcile your differences with the Shia community? How can they come together? Of course, um, you know there's a lot going on in the UK right now, in the world right now. But how can uh, you know the Sunni and Shias come together and be much more stronger as a unit together? Would you um, suggest that having, no, more, theologically, having more discussions on this on this no, topic? Theologically, theologically, the differences are too big to have a theological unity. Mm. Anybody who is even from their side, and I have to be fair, there are rational people uh, who, well, at least on in, when it comes to this. Who know that the theological differences are too big? There's another point you actually raised earlier on in the conversation about you know, the 12 and so forth. And, um, you know, I've, I've personally read um, in the Hadith, especially in the Sahih Muslim, about uh, the Prophet Salahu Alaihi Wasallam actually prophesied. to discuss these things we want to ask the questions we want to debate you know my brother i've got a lot of my of people on my channel okay who's very much so interested in islam okay but they may not specifically know the difference between sunnis and shias could you give us the, the you know the biggest distinction between sunni and shia where, where is the you know the parting of ways between sunni islam and shia islam well the biggest misconception is in, in western eyes the shiism is like catholicism and well it is shiism is like catholicism actually but like the numbers are divided between catholics and um, protestants it's not correct people are so jama'ah despite differences here and there but Umuman is a arm that they're Sunnis huh? and they are all four schools they are the vast majority over 90 percent of the Ummah the small 10 percent of the Shias who within themselves have many not just sects like we have like fiqh and stuff like that. they have like completely other like Ismailis are considered another religion according to the 12 verse and vice versa their religion is based on the Hulu exaggeration with the family of the Prophet mm. that's it the cousin of the Prophet has become the center of the religion. The creed says that the su most superior creation is Muhammad. I don't lie about Shias, I used to be Shia. When you look in Shia literature, yes, the creed, it's written that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad is the best of all creation. And this statement, is it true in Sunni societies? Wallahi al-Azim it is. Sunni in Sunni in Muslim life, it is Allah the Creator. Worship of the smallest form is only for Allah. Never ever is Prophet Muhammad in any shape or form, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, worship. Never. However, as a role model, as a for a human in this life, you hear constantly Rasulullah, 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 the message of Allah, the message of Allah, the message of Allah. That is why. Everything revolves about uh, around him, whereas in their religion, everything mainly revolves about Ali bin Abi Talib, the cousin of the Prophet That is why the greatest aid. Have you heard of the Muslims' aid? What aid do Muslims say? Aid of the Muslims. Aidul. Muslims. I'm asking about Muslims. Aidul Fitr. Aidul Fitr and Aidul Afha. Those are Eid. 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 Eid and Fitr and Afha. What is Idul What is Idul Fitr about? Idul After Fitr. worship of thirty days, fasting is worship. Yeah, Ramadan. Yeah. After fasting, worship of thirty days, huh? We have a Eid. Eid comes from Ada. It comes from Yani Ada from coming back because it comes back every year. 
We have the eight. We, we, we eat and we celebrate. So it's all for the Creator. Eid, uh, Eid al-Adha is for the Creator again. In remembrance of Ibrahim alayhi salam, Abraham who sacrificed the sheep. You know what the biggest Eid in their religion is? Eid velayat Eid Ghadir. Eid velayat The day, it's a lie. It's a lie, Buhtan. And by the way, they call the group after this lie. And it, the incident is true itself, but they made it out of proportion. Their biggest Eid is Ghadir, Eid Ghadir. They call it Eidullahul Akbar. The greatest Eid in the eyes of So what is the greatest Eid in the eyes of Allah according to the Shia religion? The day when the cousin of the Prophet became the leader. You understand? The greatest Eid in Shiism is not Fitr, Eid al-Fitr. It's not Eid al-Adha. It's not some made up Eid the day when the Prophet was declared the Prophet or anything with the Prophet. So basically, we're, Salah not, we're, we're not the same religion basically. We, no, we have Although we have similarities, yeah? We have similarities, but we have similarities. Yeah, and know? most Shia laymen, yeah, most Shia laymen do not know much differences. But in essence, modern day 12erism, we're talking, we have to be specific. I used to be a 12er Shia, the majority of Shias. Modern day 12erism. 12ism is so has so much deviated from Islam in all its forms from the way they worship from the from their aid from the way they invoke it's so much deviated that there is definitely argument uh, there is room to argue that this is not even Islam this is some form of paganism in the name of the prophet's progeny. So where, where I really want to go with this is that it's the major, it's the major issue, okay? In terms of Aqidah. Well, what the major is, issue is what, is what everybody, what you can read up online. It is claimed the major issue is only the difference between successorship. That's yeah. not true. It's not only successorship. Because um, you could believe, for example, that Ali was the right successor after the prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You have some Shiism in yourself, some Shia beliefs. But you still, um, let's say, reject all the modern day heresies that are hallmarks of Shiism, which includes invoking saints, the Imams directly, invoking them directly, praying to them exactly as Catholics do. Exactly the same thing and exactly the same excuses as Catholics do. You will never see a Catholic who, say, who will say, I, I'm a pagan, I'm an idol worshiper. He will have his Mary picture there. He will say, sweet Mary, ask her directly for help. And then when you hold them there and say, um, isn't that paganism? No, that's what the Protestant dudes say. That's not. We are doing tawassul. We are doing intercession. They do the same with the Prophet's family. All the bid'ah, all the dalalat, all the misguidance that the Prophet cursed, literally. The Prophet wasallam. let me tell you something very beautiful. It's a sahih hadith. The Prophet was informed about the Habasha, about the Ethiopians when some Sahaba moved to there and what some Sahaba have seen there. They told the Prophet they have seen images, you know, because they're, 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 they're saint worshippers. I, 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 I'm not saying to insult anybody, but to us, to Islamic theology, this is saint worship. Images of saint X, Y, Z, especially in the Orthodox Church and the Catholic Church. So when the Prophet saw this, he said, these people who have, start, who, who have started this and doing this, basically, are the most cursed of all creation. People who have exaggerated with their um, saints. with their saints that eventually these saints have turned into demigods, even if they don't call them God. Practically, they are treated as God. Even if they don't, no, none of them will call them God. No Catholic will say Mary is God. Well, they call her the mother of Allah, but, but they will invoke her directly, pray to her directly, hang up her picture, seek, seeking blessings, all these things and all these things you will only find in Shiism. I go as far as to say where you see so much similarity in pagan rituals that resemble the rituals of the Hindus and some Buddhists and the Catholics and the saint worship than the 12 Shia religion. And I advise you and the viewers to judge. There's a very beautiful video by the BBC where the reporter, it's very beautiful, type it, BBC Imam Reza Shrine, Iran, something like that. The reporter's English man, he's in Mashhad, Iran, at the shrine of Imam Reza, and he's astonished. 
He said, I see people here praying to the Imams, invoking them directly. So even this non-Muslim understood clearly these people here are worshipping the Imams. They are whatever they will call it. They can call it whatever they want. Tawassul. This is what it is to us. This is what it is to us. So for us, it's a matter of um, belief and disbelief and complete heresies, which I believe does this necessitate hatred and violence. They call it, what do you call it? Uh, what do you call it? Non-violent extremism. No, not at all. This is being, what I call it, it's being blunt. You can hold your beliefs that are maybe very strict or very straightforward. You are very, let's say somebody is a very passionate Christian. He says, yeah, if you die without this belief, you go to hell. I never got offended. Funny thing is always people who are atheists, they get offended when you say hell. It's not, if you don't believe in it, you shouldn't get offended in the first place. I have no problem if this she says to me, yeah, you are completely wrong. Everything you say is wrong. Um, you will go to hell. It's all right. I do what I believe is right. I'm a Muslim and I do da'wah mostly in the background. And um, I believe that the fitrah, the natural instinct and disposition of a human being, even if they might not agree with me now, even right now when they're listening this video, deep inside themselves, they know I'm speaking the truth. I have been to Mashhad, I have been to these shrines. I have been to Tehran, Shah Abdul Azim. I have seen what they do there. Not just what the laymen do and these excuses. Oh, it's only the laymen, the scholars don't do this. I've read the books of the scholars. All the, the exaggeration they have done with the family of the Prophet وسلم, that it turned them into demigods. I've seen this and I believe that anybody, especially someone who's familiar with Catholicism, will see a clear resemblance that traditional, I repeat, traditional, traditional Orthodox Sunni Islam. And no, that doesn't mean necessarily Wahhabism, no. Many, the vast majority of Sunni Muslims, you won't find these pagan elements, these this exaggerated um, saint worship in their societies, in their mosques. You won't. So that's it. Let me ask another question as well. Um, I've got a few questions to be honest with you, but let me ask a couple questions. Um, first question I need to ask is how can you, as a, as a Sunni, uh, reconcile your differences with the Shia community? How can they come together? Of course, um, you know, there's a lot going on in the UK right now, in the world right now, but how can uh, you know, the Sunni and Shias come together and be much more stronger? As a unit together, would you um, suggest that having, no, more, theologically, having more discussions on this? On this no, topic? theologically, theologically, the differences are too big to have a theological unity. Mm. Anybody who is even from their side, and I have to be fair, there are rational people uh, who, well, at least on in, when it comes to this, who know that the theological differences are too big, yeah, so. and um, so we they argue and we argue as well for coexistence you know we live they live um, I mean um, I could not talk about extremist things that they do like cursing the Prophet's wives on the street marches doing that I tell uh, uh, let me ask you one thing if I would walk in Qom the Vatican of the Shias and um, I would well the, Sh the thing is the most Shia saints are great and honorable people to us. Mm -hmm. We believe that their names have been misused. We believe that Imam Ali and Imam Hassan and Hussein, Ali Muslim, all these great Imams, that they're innocent of the Shias, just like Jesus is innocent of this Jesus worshiper. However, there are some Shia saints that we don't accept in our school. So imagine me going to the Vatican of the Shias and curse the Shia. What will happen to me? Mm -hmm. I'll be upside down, they will hang me. No advocating that that should be done well to me or to anybody else. But I'm just saying that we have to have our limits. And most Shias, I'm happy, and most Sunnis, they are peaceful and they live which are peaceful. And there is no, there is no contradiction. There's nothing wrong with it. And I repeat, most of my families are Shias. I know Shia people. I don't, I don't hate no Shia people. I don't hate them. I am opposed theologically to this sect or religion if you might call it just like i'm opposed to for me it's for me if i be very blunt calling jesus god and mary mother god it's vile it's just, it's, it's wrong it's paganism um, but i wouldn't rub it under the nose of my neighbor every day mm -hmm. you know we human beings we have to be we have to be sensitive. I can't go to my neighbor who's passionate Christian every day. Ah, you know what? You're a pagan. No, I don't advocate this. 
for everything there's a time and if there would be a time where somebody asked me be honest uh, theologically what do you think about this and then I would say calling a spade a spade is not extremism mm. it is it is being honest it's better to ex a, 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 a espouse and announce these beliefs so that people know okay all right that's your standpoint there's another point you actually raised earlier on in the conversation about you know the 12 and so forth and um, you know I've, I've personally read um, in the hadith especially in the Sahih Muslim about uh, the Prophet Sallallahu actually prophesizing about 12 no hadiths. it's not a prophecy it's not you have it well I, I give you I give you uh, I, I studied this brother and mm -hmm. we you can go to our website 12 mm -hmm. that deals with a Shia misuse of Sunni literature we have answered all of these. I'll give you a quick answer. Mm -hmm. If you would have, in the first place, read it probably, you would know that this is not a prophecy as in that it declares that specific 12 who are exactly their 12 Imams will one day rule. It says in the English translation that Islam will stay Aziz, honorable, strong. Mm -hmm. huh? When And when this, and when these 12 rulers rule. So if you would have listened now very sharply, you would have understood, or if you were well versed in Shizim, you would have known that, well, from the 12 Imams, two only ruled. The others didn't rule in the first place. So this hadith can't be in reference to them. You can't be an obsessed, not you. I mean, generally speaking, normally people who misuse this hadith are very sectarian. Like, you know, people who play with number games. By the way, we have a hadith in Sahih Muslim as well, or Bukhari, about 12 munafiqeen, 12 hypocrites. Now, an enemy of Ahl Bayt could come maybe and say, oh, there's 12 hypocrites, is there 12 imams? Mm. These number games are childish. Mm. This is not academical. The Prophet said in the hadith that Islam will stay strong. And 12 rulers, Umara from Quraysh, you know, Quraysh is the tribe of all of Mecca. Mm. It's very Am. It's a very general statement. The Prophet ﷺ didn't say, me and here, my cousin and his descendants will, will rule and if you don't follow them, you're going to go to hell. He didn't say anything about that. And the funny thing is, I tell you, you know, the most, the funniest part is that early Shias never used that hadith. You know why? Because their sect developed. It developed into a 12er sect. That's what you have to understand. 12er Shiism developed. It took, it took time. It took time to... How long did the 12 Imams live? Two and a half centuries. Do you know how many subsects were created? Because every time Ish Imam died, somebody claimed to be the next Imam, then somebody claimed. You don't know this. So this hadith, most Shia <laughs> polemicists, they are very, I mean, what shall I say? They have, they're gullible. They don't know that this doesn't refer to their Imams because it doesn't even, it speaks about 12 Umara, or sometimes in some wordings, khulafa, i.e. people who rule, who have actually ruled. These people rule and Islam is strong. But the Imams never ruled except two. And there's more to it. Yeah, just for you to know. And somebody says, there's more to it. But I will keep this short. And we have articles about this. Last one. I think maybe my last one. Is everybody okay? I'm trying to educate my, my, uh, my own community right now. So, um, you know, a lot of the times when we're here, they actually bring up uh, the conversation about uh, the Prophet said, I leave you behind two weighty things. Um, you know, there's one hadith, hadith, yeah, one hadith saying about uh, the Quran and Ahlul Bayt, yeah. the Quran and the Sunnah. Yeah. Could you give us a clarification? On that yes, I can give a clarification. Again, I have to first refer to our website because this is a lecture in itself. But I will try to keep it short. First of all, even the Shias who champion the Hadith of Quran Ahl Bayt, you have to understand, mm -hmm. of course, what they mean is Ahl Bayt is the Sunnah, because no Shia rejects following the Sunnah. He, he just wants to. What is the look? What is the? We say hadaf in Arabic. How do you say in English? What is the intention? What is the intention? Why do they want to say? Because they want to bring their selective Ahl Bayt and say our selective Ahl Bayt is what he what the Prophet here means with Ahl al-Bayt because you have to understand they exclude many Ahl al-Bayt that they do not consider as Ahl al-Bayt. Ahl al-Bayt were not even not these 12 Imams, my dear friend. Ahl al-Bayt, which means um, the household of the Prophets, there were many people who were related to him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who were considered his Ahl al-Bayt. There were many of these Imams 
who had sons who also claimed what? Imamat, they claimed leadership. So, so this hadith, it's a whole lecture for itself, but we say hadith of Quran and Ahlul Bayt, the most authentic version is in Sahih Muslim. If the ziyada, the zi some of them argue there's an interpolation, ziyada, idrat, uh, ziyada, they use some terms that they don't even understand themselves. The hadith is 100% sahih. Asahul hadith, the most authentic hadith in Sahih Muslim, where the Prophet said, Inni tarikum wa sallam, inni tarikum fikum al thaqalain, kitab Allah. And then he said, I leave behind you two weighty things. And then he says, Wa udhakkirukum Allah fi ahli bayt. Wa udhakkirukum Allah fi ahli bayt. Wa udhakkirukum Allah fi ahli bayt. And I remind you by Allah on my with regards to my family. This is exactly Sunni belief. Sunni belief is that the Prophet left the Quran. The Quran obviously is filled with evidences that you have to follow the Sunnah. You don't need necessary, but besides we have hadith. Alaykum bi sunnati. Bi sunnat khulafa al-rashidin min badi. Upon you is to follow my sunnah and the sunnah of my khulafa al-rashidin. We have other hadith, but even if we don't have hadith, the Quran itself in many verses. Atiullah wa atiyar rasul. Follow Allah and follow his messenger. So the Sunni position is unfortunately often, and I say this is actually distorted by Shia propagandists. Because they will bring out of the plethora of narrations, weaker narrations or actual weak narrations, say, oh, the Prophet said, I live behind Quran, Ahl Bayt. If you hold on both of them, we don't believe in this version. The most authentic version is in Sahih Muslim. Where the Prophet وسلم, said, I leave behind you Quran, wa udhakkirukum Allah fi ahli bayti, wa udhakkirukum Allah fi ahli bayti, wa udhakkirukum Allah, mind you, wa ma ahli bayti. And Sunnis believe, that's what it is. We have to respect and love ahl bayt. There's no contradiction if somebody is Shia or anybody says, yeah, but ahl bayt have been harmed, have been oppressed by some rulers. We know that, we don't deny this. Many of the Prophet's companions were also, um, many. that's what Shias don't like to talk about it, by the way. It's very. If you're interested in history, by the way, Shias have this uh, Madhlumiyah mentality. Madhlumiyah means this oppression mentality. They always emphasize how oh, the Ahl Bayt were oppressed and that the Shias were a minority. Um, first of all, that the Ahl Bayt, some of them were oppressed. This is what we have narrated. We know this. They were oppressed. They were oppressive rulers. Of course, not the Khulafa al-Rashidin, not Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, and Ali, which the Shia hate the most. There were some of the Khulafa from Bani Umayyah, maybe from Bani Abbas, but these very Khulafa, but these very Khulafa, but these very Caliphs have oppressed uh, so companions of the Prophet, students of the companions of the Prophet. Abdullah bin Umar, the son of Umar bin Khattab, was stabbed to death in Hajj by the authorities. So this Madlumiya game, that it's only them, and that's why when I approached you, when I said, please don't interrupt, when I approached you, and I said to you uh, that, uh, my friend, you made a video k kind of in their praise because of the sharp beards or whatever, and they're the underdogs. R study history. Read what happened to my country. I'm a Persian Iranian Sunni. 500 years ago, 1 million Sunnis. Some historians say 1 million, some say 500,000. Numbers are not important, why? Because it was a genocide. It was a genocide, it is recorded. It's 500 years ago. Not all Sunnis, alhamdulillah, we are still a large minority of 20% in Iran, although the Iranian government, like all oppressive governments, puts our number down between 9 and 10%. But these things happen to Sunnis as well. Large oppressions by them. And if somebody asked me about, yeah, but, well, there were Shias in history who, went, who were oppressed by some authorities. Well, I say just one thing. Read about how anti-Sunni, orthodox 12 Shia Creed is, i.e. Bara'a, this association from those who we love the most, which includes cursing and rituals that I've seen with my own eyes what they do, walking around banners, cursing the Prophet's wife, cursing the Prophet's friend, writing in Iran still, although the Iranian government, because of political correctness, they have their own policies, not because of creedal issues, they believe in it, but they're smart, they many things they don't do in practice. Like, for example, the most vast majority of Shia cler clerics in Qom are pro-Tatbir, pro 
self-harming with knives and, and blades. Most, and this is a fact, it's academically, nobody can refute me on this. Most of the major grant scholars said Qob. But the official Iranian policy is what? It's not allowed in the streets. Because of Khamenei, the revolutionary leader who is extremely disputed and politically you have seen the last few days what happened in Iran. So uh, all I can say is people need to study, need to see both sides. And um, yes, all I can say from, I am convinced of what I do. And I invite people if they want to learn more from our side and how we respond to this, they should visit www www.twelveshare.net It is our website, we believe it is academic, it refutes the most common arguments, including those that you have asked right now, and maybe many of your friends have asked, that I can't possibly now stand here probably more than an hour answer all. Last one. No, no, brother. Your last one was two months ago. Uh, no, 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 no. Okay, privately last one, yeah? Can we yeah, go private last one? It's alright, it's alright. Private yeah. last one. Private you got to turn off the cameras. My private last one is is this. Um, I've, oh. I've realised that in a lot of the um, uh, the hadith um, collections, there is hardly any um, hadiths related from Ali. That's not oh. true. I wrote an, I translated an article in Arabic. Yeah. Um, you can find it off you punk if you want you give me an email i can send you this yeah please. um so um, what was your what was the i heard this before you sound almost like a shia so there's hardly <laughs> hadith narrated by ali is that correct um, is this what you have been told that's what i've been told shall i one. give you the answer yes please please, please. i translated alhamdulillah and is a name of allah as the first person in, on this globe from yeah. arabic into english a very unique article mm -hmm. which proves that sunnis have effectively, factually narrated more authentic hadith from Ahl al-Bayt with con connected change in their books than Shias. Mm. Now to the question, do you know that in the Mustad of Imam Ahmad, which is over 60,000 hadith, mm -hmm. Ali narrates more than um, Uthman and Abu Bakr put together? Do you know that the four Khulafa in general and th this is where you need a beginner's lesson in hadith science. The Khulafa, the caliphs, early caliphs, were not known as muhaddithin. I don't use the term muhaddithin as in a modern term. They, they, term as in they were not hadith scholars. As in they were not known to narrate a lot of hadith. Mm -hmm. That is why our main narrators are who? Abu Huraira, the wife of the Prophet Aisha, Ibn Abbas son of the uncle of the Prophet mm -hmm. So even Abbas is from al -Bayt, narrated more than Omar. Mm -hmm. Now I could turn this on you and say, well, do you know that Omar didn't narrate a lot? Mm -hmm. Problem is, Shias only see, or the propaganda that is spread, they only see one side. Sorry, I need to take this from the problem. What's the topic about? Um, the topic, because they've come to refute the, uh, oh, well, they came to actually debate, or yeah. he came to actually debate the Shias themselves. Okay. So, um, you took over the Shias, but... No, <laughs> pra practically, <laughs> but you know what? Yeah, there's a lot going on that my audience here yeah, going to be lost in the source. At mm. like, the beginning bit was him clarifying stuff that it's not interesting, shall mm. I say? Like, just clarifying what they've said about him and so forth. So I wanted my audience to get something to actually, you know, some beat that they could dig into and learn. So I was asking them, you know, um, questions about Shias. Mm. So what is the distinction between Sunni Islam and Shia Islam? What's the major issue here? Like, okay. What are we really saying is the major issue. You think Who one is, he? is the guy? Is the guy knowledgeable on the subject? Yeah, he, he, is, he is. He is. He is. He is. He's knowledgeable. I think he's um he's a major guy. Mm. He's actually um, oh, produced him. yeah produced stuff um for. Tawhi TV, Tawhi TV, um, that goes across Persia, between Persian Christians, Persian nationalists, all sorts of people. So he is um, supposedly somebody major. Is but he what, Sunal al Jamal? I, was, I would assume so. He I is, but he used to be here. Yeah, he's oh, an ex oh, interesting. he grew up in Persia. Wow, in, in that's going to be ill. All right, I'm cool. But the thing is that um, it seems as though that my um, Shia brothers don't actually want to debate him. Mm, that's what he was clarifying. He's a little bit, he must be clued on, you know? He's clarifying that from the beginning for the reasons why they don't want to debate him is supposedly he has connections with Anjum Chowdhury, but he actually clarifies, you know, that he doesn't actually have any connections with him. Um, that he mocks the Shias. Um, he, he admits that he did say something that is like mockery, but it's not something that's, you know, grandiose though. It was just, you know, 
you know, poking the bear. You know how we do, you know how we do. That he's just saying that they've been a bit too sensitive um, about that. What else was he making mention of? Yeah, that was it. What did he do? He's, 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 in. he's over there. So he, he, I think that would be it, though. I don't think he's going to come back at all. Oh. He had to take a phone call, didn't he? Just? Yeah, he had to take a phone call, but I don't, I don't believe he's going to come back. Do I go get him? Yeah. No, 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 don't get him. It's not that deep. It's not that deep. Um, it was quite long, you know? About an hour and a half. Yeah, bad luck. Bad luck. Um, I stick around, I stick around.